name is Rachel and today I'm bringing you my top 10 from 2018. So these were the uh, top 10 books that I read, not necessarily published in 2018, just the books that I read. And I have to say, um, this was a very clear cut answer. These were all fives, 4.5s, and I think one four out of five because I did not have a great reading year, I feel like. I feel like most of my books were uh, two and three star ratings. So uh, it was really easy to find my top 10 because they were the, the only ones that were ranked this high. So I'm going to start at number 10 and go down to number one, my favorite book that I read of 2018. So coming in at number 10, it's Bingo Love by T. Franklin. And I really enjoyed this graphic novel, although I should not have read it. Um, in I think I heard about it on a podcast. And in the podcast, they talked about uh, needing tissues when they read this. And I thought, that's ridiculous. How can a graphic novel about bingo make you cry? totally made me cry. Uh, it is the story of uh, two black women from the 50s who meet at bingo and fall in love. But because it's the 50s uh, and because they're black, they're already kind of having a hard life at this time. They have to split up. Their families kind of insist. They both move on and marry men and have children. Uh, but then they reconnect later in life at bingo. And it is just such a sweet story. Um, I really, really enjoyed this graphic novel and I was very surprised although I totally did cry. Coming in at number nine is Ebb and Flow by Heather Smith. This is a middle grade novel told in verse um, and it follows a boy who has um, had some sort of instance at school. Some Something has gone on at school uh, and in his life where he was sent to live um, I can't remember if it's on an island or just it's coastal, uh, near water though, with his grandmother. And um, while he's there over the summer, you can you can begin to see him reflecting about the part he took in this incident and uh, how it has affected people around him. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think you got to see a very good um, character arc. You could see a lot of development from our main character. And I liked the way that the whole situation was revealed and dealt with. I just really, really enjoyed this book. Um, it was one that I wasn't expecting much from because I, at the beginning of this year, I wasn't too much into verse, but I have read several books in verse this year that I really enjoyed. So, um, I was excited by this one and I picked this up um, with my review group, so I was even more excited that I found one I really liked from there. Next up at number eight is The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. This is the second book in the Montague Sibling series by Mackenzie Lee. Um, the first one was Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I also very, very much enjoyed this year. Um, I, I think that these are just so much fun. It's very historically based, so it does feel like you kind of are learning something um, when you're just really having fun reading. Um, it's a fun history book, if you will. In this one, we follow um, the main character from the first book's sister uh, through her escapades, and Felicity wants to be a doctor in a time when women are not allowed in the field, and we see a lot of that in this book, this blatant prejudice against women saying that it's never been done. It's not going to be done. You are not welcome to practice here with us. Um, but she does find a crew where she does belong. And it's such an adventure, just like the first one. I highly recommend these. Very, very fun and very LGBTQ plus friendly. I just very much enjoyed this one. Coming in at number seven is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. I love this woman, although she makes my heart hurt. Um, I've read two of her books and both of them just gutted me in the same way. Like they're just so, they're so good. Uh, and there are, there, she tends to pick things in history that you don't know much about and explains them to you in a way that makes it seem like how have we not known about this our whole life? Uh, and in this one, we follow um, one of the biggest maritime disasters in history that's kind of been covered up um, through the eyes, through the lens of war. Um, and it was amazing. I I couldn't put it down. I read this during a readathon. I can't remember which one, but uh, I literally sat and read this in one sitting. Fantastic. It's told through alternating uh, perspectives as all of the characters are trying to get onto this boat and flee um, 
after after Hitler's basically announced that he they're al- they're allowed to leave finally because he does not see them winning the war. So they're all trying to flee for their lives and get on this boat, and you know what's coming um, because of the, the the spoilers on the back of the book. You you know going into it, there's going to be this huge maritime disaster. So it's just so ominous. It reminded me a lot of reading uh, of watching rather the movie Titanic. Like you know what's going to happen. And you can feel it coming and the pressure just keeps building and you just so desperately want things to change. But I very much enjoyed this. Uh, We read this from my uh, high school book club and the kids really enjoyed this. And I believe this is uh, soon to be a movie. So stay tuned for that. Next up, I reread To All the Boys I Loved Before. Um, I wasn't going to put rereads on this list, but this was one of uh, a short list of five star reads I had this year. So I decided to include it in here. Um, this is obviously by Jenny Han. We reread this. Uh, well, I reread it with my high school book club. They, most of them were reading it for the first time when the movie came out. If I read this at a different time, maybe I wouldn't have given it a five star. But for me, for me, it just nailed all the little tick marks that I wanted in a book at the time. Like I just thoroughly enjoyed reading it. I just felt really good when I got it finished. I thoroughly enjoyed the reread. Um, I liked the romance. I liked the character build up. I'm always a sucker for the trope of like they fall in love after they don't like each other uh, because they learn a lot more about each other slowly over the course of the book. So this just really was right up my alley this time. So I gave it five out of five stars. I think the first time I read it, I gave it four and a half. But for some reason this time, it was just perfect. I absolutely loved it. Five out of five. Next up is a children's nonfiction book called National Parks of the USA. Uh, it's written by Kate Cyber and illustrated by Chris Turnham. And I just love this book. I can't say enough about this. I've been recommending it. I absolutely need to get it uh, stat for my school libraries. Um, basically, it just focuses on what the title says, on parks of the U.S., but the illustrations are fantastic. A lot of things are presented kind of in an infographic way. Um, and it just gives you a lot of fun things. It kind of focuses in on the different areas of the United States and the kind of wildlife and um, like animals and plants and everything that you might see there, what the weather is like. I just thought, I feel like I learned so much from this book. Um, so I just, I loved it. I thought this was fantastic. I think kids would like to read it. Um, I think this would be exceptionally fun if you travel with uh, your family to any national parks. It would be fun to see the ones you travel to. So absolutely loved it. It is number five for me. Next up at number four is The Prince and the Dressmaker, uh, a graphic novel, I believe, uh, written and illustrated by Jen Wang. And I just thought this was amazing. Uh, It's a story of a prince who kind of has a secret hobby of dressing up like a woman. And he hires this dressmaker and it's all done in secret, but he kind of becomes like the belle of the ball, like the talk of the town. And uh, obviously they have kind of some disagreements about her wanting to be credited for her work and him wanting to keep it a secret, but it's fantastic. The illustrations are just wonderful. Um, I liked the message. I liked the ending. I liked the art. It was fantastic. Next up is another book that maybe if I had read at a different point, I might not have given five stars, but it just literally was amazing while I was reading it. So I gave it a five. That is From Twinkle with Love by Sandia Menon. Um, I read her first book last year, I believe it was. Uh, and that is uh, When Dimple Met Rishi. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I was super excited to get this one. I got it as an e-arc and I read it like the moment they sent it to me. Um, I remember reading it uh, just straight through basically because I was so excited for the story. This one focuses Um, on Twinkle. She is an aspiring filmmaker and it is told through letters that she writes um, to women directors that she looks up to and she's kind of explaining to them things that are happening in her life and of course there's like some boy drama. She's in love with this with this boy but she ends up working with his brother uh, and it's just I don't know. At the time, it hit all the boxes, like I said. It just was right up my alley. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I liked the characters. I loved the the main character in this. Oh, Sahil was just amazing for me. So I really, really enjoyed this. I'm very much looking forward to more Sonia Menon in 2019.
Coming in at number two is the graphic novel adaptation for Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. I mean, this was absolutely fantastic. I was a little bit worried when I heard this was going to be adapted to a graphic novel. However, I saw that Emily Carroll was going to do the illustrations and she's fantastic. Um, she, she did, uh, I can't remember which one did she do the out of the woods, into the woods, something about the woods through the woods. Uh, and it was awesome. So when I saw that Emily Carroll was going to be doing the illustrations for speak, that kind of, uh, piqued my interest there. So I got this as the graphic novel and somehow it was even more impactful as a graphic novel than it was as a traditional novel, which I didn't think was possible. It was just so moving and haunting and I'm so excited to be able to use this graphic novel to introduce the story to more students at my school. It's such an important story. If you haven't read it yet, you absolutely need to. Uh, it's a very moving tale of a girl who is dealing with a lot of things, including a sexual assault uh, in a high school setting. And it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars. Second favorite book of the year. And finally, my top book of the year was my Harry Potter read for this year. And that was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I think one of the reasons this was so fantastic is because I did start reading it while I was in Orlando last year. Uh, going to Harry Potter world. So it just kind of added a little bit more to the book. Um, I don't, I've, I've said this before on my channel, but this was a, the first read for this book for me. I have had kind of a love hate relationship with Harry Potter. I didn't like it for the majority of my life. I read the first one and I just didn't get it. Didn't nearly care about it. Didn't get on the train until very recently. I, I reread it at some point and it just resonated then. So, uh, I'm slowly but surely working my way through the Harry Potter books. Um, I, I do feel like I kind of just want to read the rest of them and know, but I also kind of want to take it slow because it's not like we're going to get any more of like the original series. So I'm just making my way slowly through the series. Uh, I think I'm, my goal is just to read like one a year uh, and just keep on taking it slow. But I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I'd heard that uh, the first and second book were probably the slowest and the least um interesting I guess um and book three did really pick up for me and then book four just blew me away I liked the the Triwizard Tournament I was excited to see more Quidditch uh and to see some uh of the different schools so I'm very 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 excited to continue on and read the fifth book The Order of the Phoenix this year and we'll see if maybe that's my top read of 2019. So there you have it, my top 10 books of 2018. If you read any of these and you agree or disagree, I'd love to know down in the comments. And let me know down below what are some of the top 10 books you read this past year. I would love to hear. Maybe I'll get to them this year. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in another video soon. Bye for now.